Hi, and welcome to another free Teaching Thursday. This is one I jump into this group and I do some live training. If you haven't joined us before, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name is Anne Markey and I am a Christian speaker and author and the head behind the blog, OneDeterminedLife.com and the moderator for this group, and I'm really glad you're here. So if you're here with me live, please say hi in the comments, and if you're catching the replay, I'm also so happy that you're here, and uh, you can say hi in the replay as well. Today, I'm going to answer the number one question I see all the time when it comes to reading the Bible, and that is, where do I start? In today's age, there are thousands of Bible studies, Bible study resources, online tools, Christian blogs, podcasts, book, you name it. There are so many great resources out there. But if we have so many resources out there, why is it so hard for people to start? It's because they have too many choices. When I was a kid, we had a TV and a VCR and we had four movies. It was Gulliver's Travels, Hans Christian Andersen, um, Dr. Doolittle, and Fantasia. And so on PD days, we would never fight about what we were going to watch because we knew that those were our four options and we usually would just watch two. Now later on, when we got a little bit older, we would start going around the house and finding coins in the couches and underneath beds, and then we would walk to the movie rental store, and then we would probably spend an hour looking for a movie, and then we'd have to decide, you know, one between the four of us, and then we would go home. And that entire process took a lot longer. And it's because when we have so many choices, it's actually harder for us to make a choice because we're afraid of missing out. I'm sure you've heard of FOMO, fear of missing out, and it's the fear that you're gonna miss out on the things that you didn't choose. And so because you're worried about what you're missing out, you don't actually choose to do any of them. It's the same for Bible studies. Like I said, there are many resources out there, but because we have so many resources, we're afraid that if we put this Bible study in that and not that Bible study, that we're somehow missing out. And so then we don't even get started because we're overwhelmed with the amount of choices that we have. So are you ready for my number one piece of advice? Yeah, you don't have to wait to the end. I'm going to give it to you right at the start. My number one piece of advice for you, just start. You don't need fancy equipment. You don't need the right Bible. You don't even need the fancy pens or the fancy journal or anything like that. All you need is the Word of God. Now, most of you probably have a smartphone and on those smartphones, you even probably have a Bible reading app. So you already have all the tools you need to get started. You either have a Bible or you have a Bible reading app. So when you already have the tool, you still might be thinking, okay, great, just start. Where do I start? I suggest starting in one of the four Gospels. So that's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And most people, whether they're spiritual leaders or other Christians, recommend that this is where you start because the Gospels is where you get to meet Jesus. It's God's son here on earth, living his ministry. So you get to see the miracles that he does. You get to learn who he is and the type of person God is through reading the gospels. And so it's a really great place to start. Now, if you're still trying to have a hard time and say, okay, Anne, but that's still four choices, please narrow it down. I'm gonna make it even easier for you. I suggest that you start with the book of John. John is an excellent gospel to start with because it is a little bit different than the other gospels. Um, and just some of the word pictures and the languages and the way that he tells stories is a little bit different. Um, but it's just a really great place to start because in that book, you get to know who God is through some of the I am statements. This is Jesus himself saying, I am this, this, this. And he does that seven times throughout the book of John. And so if you really want to know who Jesus is, 
and you want to figure out where to get started, start with the book of John. So getting started is really that easy. You open up your Bible or you open up your Bible app, you turn to the book of John and you start reading at chapter one. Now at this point, I don't want you to get start worrying about trying to take notes or dig a little bit dip, deeper or any of those things. What I want you to focus on is reading and reading regularly. So now that you've started, it's time to make that into a habit. Now, you've probably heard that a habit takes about 21 days to set in, that our minds take about that long to make a little route in our minds to say, okay, this is the path we're taking now, um, and it takes about 21 days to do that. Now, what's perfect is that John just so happens to have 21 chapters. So if you're wondering, okay, great, Anne, I wanna make this into a habit, what am I gonna read though during those 21 days? It's perfectly easy. Day one, you read John chapter one. Day two, you read John chapter two, and so on, so that you've now done that for 21 days. So at the end of that time, you have read the entire Gospel of John. Okay, so now you've read the book of John for 21 days, but maybe you're like me and you're sitting there and you're wondering, okay, great, Anne, that's fantastic. I have this plan for 21 days, but then what do I do? I totally get that and I don't want you to get tripped up. So here's what you do. In those 21 days, you have some homework. I'm gonna give you two tasks. Number one is I want you to ask yourself, why am I reading the Word of God? There are many reasons to read scriptures. I talked about some a few weeks ago right here in some training that I did in this Facebook group. And every single one of us may have a different reason for reading God's word. So I want you to just take a minute and figure out why you want to read God's word. Is it to get to know God better? Is it to get some sort of wisdom around making a specific decision? Is it about, you know, growing more as a Christian, figuring out what are those practices that you want to be doing, but you're not sure how, and so you want to find those answers within scripture. Or maybe you're feeling some unrest and you just want some peace. Or you're struggling with a particular sin and you want some guidance from the Lord to overcome it. And so there's a billion reasons why somebody would want to maybe start reading God's word, but I want you just to take five or 10 minutes. It doesn't have to be complicated. I want you to think about why do you want to read God's word? So not only do I want you to be thinking about it, but through your thinking, I want you to bring this towards the Lord. Go to him in prayer and say, Lord, I want to read your word. I want to learn from it. I want to grow in it. What do you want me to learn? Where do you want me to read? What area should I grow in? As you're walking through those things, whether it's five minutes or the full 21 days, I don't know, something should stick out in your brain. So maybe that's the spirit leading or you're thinking through some of the options and one is just like, oh, that sounds like a really good thing. I want to do that. So most of you should have something that sticks out when you think about that and you pray through it. Okay, now that you have your reason, I want you to write it down. Now maybe there's some of you here who are watching this and you're like, Anne, nothing stuck out. I have no clue what I want to do next. Now, this is critical. Do not let that keep you from doing the next step. If you're still not sure what you should be reading and what you should be doing, stick around because I've got some advice for you. So now that you've written down your reason for reading God's word, I want you to now go to step number two. And that is find a Bible reading plan that matches the area that you want to grow in or the reason why you want to read God's word. So for example, a few years ago, I was kind of feeling really lost as a parent and I was struggling with how do I raise kids to love the Lord and what does the Bible have to say about raising kids? 
And I knew that I wanted to kind of have that frame of mind when I was going through scripture. So I opened up my Bible app and um, I went to the plan sections and I just typed in parenting. And sure enough, there was a long list of different Bible reading plans that were about parenting. And I found one that looked really interesting. And so I started reading it. Now, because there are so many resources out there for Christians, I promise you that whatever the reason why you want to read the Word of God or the area that you want to grow in, there's a reading plan that can help you do that. So whether it's learning more about peace or love or about God and who he is, his names, about your identity in Christ, or even about women in the Bible or the disciples, or maybe you want to learn about all the miracles that the Lord's done. Whatever it is that you want to focus on, there's already a resource out there for you to do. And I'm so thankful for Google because really all you have to do then is once you figure that out, you can go to Google and say, Bible reading plan about or verses about and then you'll get a bunch of different pages that will give you verses to read about the thing you want to grow in or learn more about or the thing that you're interested in. So then once you find that plan, what I want you to do is I want you to print it out or have it handy really close by and then I want you to follow it. Okay, so whether if you're feeling really intimidated and you're not sure that you can do something for a long time, start with a five day reading plan, maybe a 10 day reading plan. I think sometimes when we start with like a 365 day reading plan, it feels too big of a goal. And then when we skip a day, you're like, oh my goodness, I'm already behind it. It's gonna take me a year and a day. And then eventually we just stop doing it because it's gonna take us two years and we failed. And so my brain does not work well when my goals are that large, I have to break them down. And so start small, start with one verse a day. Maybe start with one verse every three days, whatever it is just to start. And then once you've started and you've built that habit and things are going well, then you can add to it. So now maybe instead of reading just one verse a day, you read two verses a day. Or maybe you're really good at reading five verses every day. And so now that you're doing that consistently, maybe now it's time to say, okay, I want to dig deeper into these verses. How do I do that? And it's as simple as just asking yourself a few questions and making some observations and then just digging a little bit deeper. So now that you have found the plan and you started reading it, eventually it'll end and the cycle starts again. So by the time you're finished one reading plan, you may be in a different stage or maybe something else caught up in your brain. You're like, I'm really interested in doing this. And so then the cycle just goes over. This past Sunday, our pastor was speaking about reading the Bible and he was saying how it might not be a great idea to find your Bible and just kind of like, um, oh, okay, read that verse and that's your life verse. And I agree with him to a point because I think sometimes the idea of starting can feel really scary and can feel like a really big choice or that maybe we're doing the wrong decision and then we're still having a hard time starting. So even after the advice I've given you, if you're still feeling like, I don't know where to start, then you know what? Take the Bible, open it, turn to a verse. And yeah, it may not be a good one. Okay. But don't just read that verse. Read the verse around it, before it, after it, read the chapter. Hey, if you want, read the book. The point is, is that if you're having a hard time starting, and that method is gonna be the only way that you actually get going, then do it. There's absolutely nothing wrong because the most important thing is that you are building a habit of going into the word, doing it regularly, and spending that time with God. Because what I've learned is that regardless of what scripture you're reading, 
The Lord can use it to bless you and teach you and convict you and to help you grow. So since you've joined this group and since you're watching this, you've already taken that first step. You've raised your hand and you said, yes, I want to grow. I want to learn more. I want to start digging and I want some help doing that. And I think that's amazing. And my heart is truly to serve you, to help you to figure out what it is that works for you, to give you the resources and tools and encouragement you need to have that personal relationship with the Lord. Because once you can do that, you're gonna learn so much about God. And that's what excites me because I've been getting to know him almost my whole life. And the more I get to know him, the more I realize how much of him I still need to get to know because he is just so large and so deep and there's so much to learn that it's really amazing. And I love it that I get to do that today and tomorrow and for eternity. Okay, so maybe after all of that, you're still not really sure where to start. You're maybe feeling overwhelmed by still all the choices. And my heart is to serve you, but... And that's why I'm so excited to tell you about the Faith in Action Conference. This is a free four-day virtual event to help Christian women take action in their faith through a deep dive Bible study of Matthew chapters 5 to 7 and parts of James. The Faith in Action Conference is all about helping Christian women take action in your faith through doing some deep dive Bible studies. There will be 16 speakers over four days, and they will each help you discover how to live out your faith by looking at Matthew chapters 5 and 7 and parts of James. These chapters are filled with practical advice for us, everything from how to treat one another to marriage advice. To register for the conference, go to www.onedeterminedlife.com forward slash faith or scan the QR code. Register today and I can't wait to see you there. Bye.